And welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and I am so excited about being able to share with you again. Now, if you would, I'd really appreciate it if you uh, like, share, and uh, comment on our subject matter today. I believe it's going to be a very, very good one. In fact, about it, this particular uh, subject... Um, has been generated by a lot of talk I hear today, um, social media, in the streets, in church, in restaurants where I meet people, in, in airports. Everybody, everybody's consumed with the high value man, the high value woman. Uh, women want a man that's. Um, six feet tall, makes six figures, and has a six-pack. But I was just that uh, women doing it, the Women Doing It Big conference with my daughter, Tiana Von Johnson, and I mentioned six-pack, six figures, six feet tall, and a lady screamed from the back of the room, six, six, six. It's the mark of the beast. That's the mark of the devil. Sometimes you can get all three of those sixes and end up with a pure devil talking about you have a high value man. You can't determine that a man is high value based on his stature or his wallet, you know, or whatever else. And then on the flip side of that, you have men that say, well, you know, I want a high value woman. And your description of a high value woman is that she's cooperative um, you know, she's petite, she works out and, and, you know, whatever else. And a lot of times you can get all of that and still have a Jezebel in disguise. 
you you can still have a devil on your hand. You can have, you know, cute and crazy are not necessarily um, mutually exclusive. You know, you don't usually find out uh, the real character of a person until you've gone too far. But everybody's consumed with the high value man, the high value woman. Uh, the women want, you know, what they want. The men want. The men want what they want. And everybody's getting what you think you desire, but nobody's really getting what you need. And by no means am I saying when I tell women all over this country, uh, the world actually, that you got to have more than just your type. Just because a person is your type, it does not mean that that person is your kind. There are a lot of things that I'm attracted to. I'm attracted to ice cream, but ice cream will kill me, right? I'm attracted to French fries. I'm attracted to pizza. But these things will kill me. Just because it's my type does not mean it's my kind. And by my kind, I mean something, someone that will agree with me, someone that will actually fit my future, someone who's not just, um, you know, here for today, but someone who's, you know, conducive for my life tomorrow and moving forward. But in no way am I saying that you, you, you know, you should settle for a person that you can't stand to look at. Of course, looks are a part of the deal. But all I'm saying is that there are some things that have to come ahead of looks. And, um, you know, if, if you get certain things that, that should be weightier than looks in place and you 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 you're toy you know you're toiling between your mind is is caught between a person that's a physical 10 or 9 versus a person that may be a 6 but they have all of the other characteristics the long term characteristics it's really not a question you go with the person that has the internals Whereas you get a person that that's everything you want to look at and everything you want to roll around in the bed with, but they don't have no brains. They don't have any character. They, there's no fidelity. There's no trust. There's nothing internal. That should be that should be a non-negotiable, no deal, you know. But I, I I had to go on that little spill because I wanted you to see where I come to this thought from. While everybody is consumed with the high value man, the high value woman. Very few people are discussing the fact that God actually ordains the high value couple. Now, God started this thing with a single man, right? And he allowed that man to live alone until that man was whole physically, spiritually, socially, economically. He knew his purpose. And then God says, it's not good that this man should be alone. I will make him an help meet. Then God pulled a rib from that man's side, created woman, put the man to sleep, created woman. We don't know how long he and Eve, God and Eve, rocked out while Adam was asleep. We don't know how long he was unconscious. But at a certain point, God said, now let me bring the two of you together. And when Adam saw Eve, he knew that she was his kind. And he says, you're bone of my bone, you're flesh of my flesh. I want you to shift your consciousness from just the idea of a high value man, a high value woman, and I need you to come to this place where you begin to embrace the concept of the high value couple. You know, like we have conversations now about, um, well, let me, let me not get ahead of myself. Go to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 22. And this is the message version that I'm reading. And listen to how it reads. He says, find a good spouse. You find a good life. And even more, 
the favor of God. Now, the King James Version puts it this way. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of or from the Lord. So God ordains marriages. Now watch this. It's not to say that favor is not on the life or the lives of singles, because it is. It is. You know, there's a purpose that God has put on every individual's life, and there's favor that's on every individual's life. But when when the two come together, there's something that multiplies. Glory to God. Even in that uh even in the book of Genesis where where God brought Adam and Eve together and God gave them dominion, purpose of that dominion was that they might be able to multiply and replenish. There's something about being connected to the right kind of spouse, the right kind of man, the right kind of woman that causes everything in your life to multiply. When my wife came into my life, everything multiplied. Everything multiplied and continues to multiply. Wow. Continues to multiply because there's a thing, a spiritual thing called the high value couple. Now, let me jump in. My first point, I only have four. and I don't think I'm going to be that long today. When you think about the dynamics of a high-value couple, what does this couple look like? Let me rewind for a second. The first qualification to participate in this kind of partnership is that you, my brother, my sister, must be whole. You must be a high-value man. You must be a high-value woman if you plan on attracting a high-value mate that would create a high-value couple. Now, when I talk about high-value, I'm not talking about your bank account. It's really not about your bank account as much as it is about your work ethic. So I can't determine that a guy is a high-value guy because he has six, seven figures he's making a year. I mean, I say it all the time. I know a whole lot of dirtbags that make that kind of money. But if there's a guy that has God in his heart and has, you know, has has the capacity, the grown man capacity to be faithful to one woman, and if he's an honest man and he's a hardworking man and he has an amazing vision, that's a high value man. Now, now a lot of women are passing on this guy because society has taught you that to do with the bank account is the high value guy and you get him and you get your 666. But you see, it takes it takes authentic high value to recognize high value. You know, a woman is not high value because she she wears Chanel and and she's a size three, four, five, or six, and because she's polite. You know, there are a whole lot of women that are polite and and they they put on the act that they are agreeable and all of that until you. Till you pull that trigger and you marry them, or you sign those papers. Whole lot of little women switching around here with Chanel on, full of nothing but demons. A woman is high value when she has a heart for you. Guy, guy asked me the question recently: How does a man know if a woman loves him? If a woman really loves you, she fights with you, she fights for you, she believes in you. If a woman really loves you, she fights with you. She fights for you, and she believes in you. Can't nobody tell her nothing about you if she really loves you. Now, if you down on your luck and your girl's whole energy shifts, it was never never a love thing. A high-value woman is a woman that has the kind of character to actually be a wife. She's the kind of woman that you want your children to learn from. She's the kind of woman that will never make you shame in public. She's the kind of woman that'll do you good all the time. She's going to hold you down. You never have a reason to step out of your house because she's going to hold it down. But you got to be high value to attract high value. 
But when you see these people, these two people come together to create this high value couple, this Adam and Eve type deal. Number one, here's some of the dynamics. Only have four. The entire partnership is founded on mutual respect. The entire partnership of a high value couple is founded on mutual respect. You see these, these conversations, these extended conversations y'all having all over social media about submitting to a woman or submitting to your husband or simping out for a woman. You know, a man should never uh, open himself up to serve a woman and and a man should, you know, manage and manipulate a woman. And then you got women saying to women, you should never submit to a man. Get your bag up and do what you want to do and tell a man where to go. You can always be by yourself. You, you can always be by yourself because you are not presently a conscious wife. And you see, you got to be a wife to have a have a wedding. You can't, you can't be a wife after the wedding. You got to be a wife when a husband finds you. And if you sitting there with a mindset that, you know, I, you know, I ain't submitting to nobody. I'm a, I, I got my bag and I'm going to do what I want to do. You're going to be sitting right there doing what you want to do with a whole lot of money by yourself. If you sitting there and you think that you really going to track wifey material and you around here just playing games, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get exactly what you deserve. And you're going to look up years later, you're going to marry one of these little women that play, ran the game on you like brothers have been doing on women. And she's going to take all your money and you're going to be an old man sitting around with a bunch of children that don't don't like you. And when you get sick, you ain't got nobody to take care of you. But a high value couple is founded on mutual respect. We ain't arguing about respecting one another. Woman's not arguing about submitting to her husband. Man is not arguing about submitting to his wife when necessary. I know that's a strange concept, but if you're really going to be a husband, there are times that you're going to have to submit to your wife. You know why? Because there are going to be some things that she's smarter in. There are going to be some seasons that you run upon and it's her lane. It's not your lane. It's her expertise. It's not your expertise. And you know what you're going to need to do? Get out of the way and just do as you're told. Now, if you're not man enough to handle that, you're not ready for high value partnership. You're not ready to be a part of a high value couple. Listen to what the Bible says in Genesis 1.26, and this is the, the New International Version. It says this, then God said, let us make man kind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule, that what? They may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock, all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move uh, along the ground. But the thing I want you to zoom in on, God said, let us make mankind, male and female, in our image, in our likeness. So they're equivalent. So that they may rule, not he may rule. And in the King James, you know, it talks about let them have dominion. Now watch this. God never gave Adam dominion over Eve. Go and read the, the biblical account. And God never gave Eve dominion over Adam. They were to dominate all of creation, but not one another. Because they, they came into the relationship with the understanding that is yin and yang. We have different roles to play, but we are equivalent. And so Adam came in respecting his woman, and, and Eve came in respecting her man. Now, since the entire partnership of a high-value couple is founded on mutual respect, what makes a woman feel respected? A woman feels respected when she feels loved. When, when a woman feels like she has her husband's complete and total uh, attention, that she's not having to share him with nobody, that he finds her beautiful and he affirms her publicly, those are the things that make a woman feel 
respected, when he's making decisions that he takes the time to consult her and say, what you think? What are your thoughts about this? That, that her expertise are so appreciated that he lets her flow in her lane. But she's generally, she generally feels respected in the relationship when she feels like she's properly loved. Now, what makes a man feel respected? A man feels respected when he feels acknowledged. When he, when he feels acknowledged, when he's not ignored. And, and when, he, when, he, when he walks into his space and he feels acknowledged, when he's preferred by his woman, that's what makes a man feel respected. You know, when 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 the tone of his woman is not the same with him as it is with the kids. See, sometimes women have a more respectful tone with their sons than they do their husbands. And I'm talking about husbands that are meeting their financial obligations to the family, showing up every day. Sometimes a woman has more respect with her son than she does her husband. And ask me how I know. I've seen it before. I've seen women disrespect their husbands and then talk to their children, you know, like, like they're the boss. Listen to what Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 25 says. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Acknowledge your husband. For acknowledge him as, you know, the Bible says the woman is the weaker vessel. Acknowledge him as as the stronger vessel. Acknowledge the fact that if somebody break in his house, he's going to have to be the one to put his life on the line. Acknowledge the fact that if you can't work no more, he's responsible to hold this down. Acknowledge the fact that God put him in place to make certain that, you know, any problems that arise in your life, he's supposed to be, he's supposed to put himself in front of you. Don't have this man occupying this position without the acknowledgement and the respect that goes along with it. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, I had to, I'm glad it said that because a lot of times submission is preached and taught almost as if whatever your man tell you to do, you just got to do it. No, if he ain't lining up with God, and if he's going down a path that is destructive and ungodly, you, you're not responsible to submit to that as it is fit in the Lord. Submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now watch verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So the, the, the admonishment to the wife is to submit. The admonishment to the husband is to sacrifice. If, if the husband is going to love the wife like Christ loved the church, the husband is going to have to be the sacrificial lamb for the family. That means the husband may have to get two or three jobs to hold the family down financially. That's why you're making a fool of yourself if you're marrying a man that doesn't have a work ethic. He's not fundamentally prepared to be a husband because a husband is a provider by nature. Now, now if he marries... Oprah Winfrey, you know, he don't need to work, you know, he, but he'll still go and pull his nickels and his dimes in. <laughs> you know, when you start talking about Oprah, you can make a million dollars a year. That's nickels and dimes to her because, it, because of his work ethic. But fundamentally, the husband has to sacrifice himself. If he's not a, if he's not a sacrificial man, he's not a high value man. If, if you got a woman that's struggling to submit to you and she says, God, God sent you to her and you are a husband and she's struggling to submit, she ain't ready to be no, she ain't ready to be no wife. Because here's my issue with that, you know, and I got to say this before I move on. I know I'm getting in trouble, but I've been in trouble before. This is good trouble. Here's my problem with women that uh, get to a point where you say, well, 
you know, you, you ain't submitting to no man. And then God give you an actual husband that loves you and honors you. And, and, and you know, you giving the man all kinds of problems with all of this, you know, it's, it's just, just, just all that and all, all this here, you know, you didn't do that with them dudes that drug, drug you across the kitchen floor by your tracks. You didn't do that to those dudes that, 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 you know, put their hands on you and abuse you and all this kind of stuff. You submitted to them. But when God give you a real man, a real husband, you're going to struggle with submission. You ain't ready for no high value situation. You ain't ready for it. And you're going to always attract your level till you change your mind as a woman or a man. You are never going to attract. See, because a high value man, he's going he's gonna to recognize that. He's going to peep that. And he's going to bow out gracefully. He ain't going to have no arguments. He ain't screaming and hollering. He ain't cussing nobody out. He ain't going on social media. He just going to bow out gracefully. High value woman, if 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 you're not really a high value man in here and in here, she's gonna peep that, and she has no problem rocking out by herself. That's why she's high value. She's already complete within herself. She's bringing a whole her to the situation. That's how it becomes high value. A man brings a whole man. The woman brings a whole woman. Woman don't need a man to complete her. A man don't need the woman to complete him. He's already complete. But if the two can come together, whoo, my goodness, we can multiply situations. But the entire partnership is founded on mutual respect. We ain't got these arguments about respect. We don't have to keep having these conversations about, you know, um, submission and if if a woman brings more to the relationship other than sex and bearing children. A high value man already understands that many times if he chooses wisely, his woman's going to be smarter than him. And, and he's, he, he doesn't have a problem getting out of her way and submitting, respecting, you know, her giftings and her role in his life. Her role in your life is number one, to help you. Her role in your life is to usher favor into your life on a whole different level. But if we, we have any struggles over mutual respect, I mean, this is nursery school stuff. Y'all still running here arguing about submission? You, you know, why would you even consider a man you can't submit to? Why would you consider a woman you can't hear and submit to if, if she has... I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. You see, the man and the woman is like the pilot and the co-pilot. The co-pilot is as capable as the pilot or the captain. They just have different roles. Something go wrong, the captain's going to have to ultimately be held responsible. That's the man and the woman. It's just a matter of roles. But in the cockpit of the marriage, the relationship, the two have mutual respect. And if you don't have that in a relationship, you ain't working with much. Number two. Number two. Oh, I love this one right here. A high value couple manifest or maybe I should put it this way. A high value couple lives with dominant energy roles. A high value couple lives with dominant energy roles. See, everybody is everybody's concerned about gender roles. You know, should a man wash the dishes? Should a man make the bed? Should a man vacuum? Should a woman work? You know what I mean? Should a woman do this? Should a woman do that? Well, I don't I I I think some, I think he ought to make the bed up and, and I think she need to go get her job. You know, hey, you, number one, you have to understand this here. When it comes down to your relationship, it's your relationship. So ain't no cookie cutter model for these what we call gender roles. You know, in my house, it's, it's a little more traditional than normal, but not as traditional as most. You know what I'm saying? Because my wife is involved in a whole lot of stuff that um, many wives may not get in, but that's our marriage. That's what makes our house work. 
You know, when if I'm the last one out the bed in the morning, I make the bed up. I, 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 I'll straighten the room up. If the house is not tidy, I will clean the house up to the best of my ability, at least. Because we don't struggle with, you know, well, that's your role as a woman and that's your role as a man. When, when, when Lisa and I first got married, she made more money than me. Yeah. Now, now, according to the gender roles, I'm supposed to be the one making all the money. We caught up on gender roles, gender roles, when the conversation really should be about energy roles. Power couples, high value couples, have dominant energy roles between feminine and masculine. So you may run upon, um, you know, a relationship where you see a, a, a high value couple. She may make more money than him. But when you see the energy, she's going to be feminine. He's going to be masculine. One couple I can that comes to mind right now, and I don't know his, the brother's financial situation, but I know he's married to a woman that's a heavy money maker, and that's Fantasia and her husband. I mean, I would imagine she probably makes more money than him. I don't know a lot of men that make as much money as Fantasia probably makes. But when you see them together, she's in the feminine. He's in the masculine. Because high-value couples recognize dominant energy roles. Now, when I say feminine energy, I'm talking about such things as feminine energy is nurturing. It's supportive, it's calming, it's cooperative, it's family building energy, right? It's the energy that makes a house a home. That's feminine energy. It's the reason children gravitate to mamas more than they do dads. It's because children are gravitating to that nurturing energy. Now, when you start talking about masculine energy, we're talking about the energy that protects the energy that is decisive, logical, the, the energy that asks a lot of questions, the energy that is provisional. So when you look at a, a high-value couple, they, they live within the framework of dominant energy roles. Now, now watch this. Let me make a statement here. Both men and women can share these positions, but high-value couples lean towards their dominant energy roles. Now, what did I mean by that statement I just read? There are times that a man can be nurturing. There, there are times that a man can fall back into the supportive role. There are times that a man has to be the calming factor. There are times that a man has to step up and figure out how to build a family. Wife sick, wife out of pocket. Maybe she's in the military or something. She's overseas. Bro, man, got to learn how to run the house, keep these children together, get this homework done, keep this house tidy, get everybody fed. See, that's feminine energy to, to have, the, to have the, the wisdom and the will to, to nurture, you see? And then th there are times that women you know, have to be the decisive one. There are times that women are the providers, you know what I mean? Uh, but when you, when you think about high value couples, they, they lean more towards their dominant energy roles. And what is that? The dominant energy role for a man is masculine. The dominant energy role for a woman is feminine. Now, the unfortunate reality today is that the way society has gone, we've pushed women into having to be more masculine than most women desire. A lot of women are more masculine than they even realize they are because they've not had, you see, we, 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 we lament the creation of the, of the boss chick, but we as men created the boss chick by necessity. The boss chick wasn't something invented in a, in a lab. The boss chick was invented when we stopped showing up 
to be husbands and to cover our homes and to actually be in place. And I know there are a lot of arguments about why certain uh, you know, men are not able to be in the home and why men were out of absent from the family and all of that. And I, I understand all of those things, but the boss chick was created by necessity. And then you have the boss chick that has sons, and because there's no father around to to masculinize the boy, the, the boss chick feminizes the boy. She gives him everything. When I say feminize, I'm not talking about his, his sexual preferences, but he lacks the capacity to protect. He's indecisive. He doesn't feel the desire or the need to provide because mommy got me. Mommy's giving me everything I need. I'm a grown man sitting here shaving and mommy's providing me with everything. So mommy's just raising up a little feminine man to pass off to some woman who's going to believe that she can take and change him and turn him into a masculine man. All he got to do is just be fine and be able to have good sex. She'll take him and think she can bring him home and turn him into a masculine man. But a high value couple the man leans toward more towards masculine energy while the woman falls more into feminine energy. You see, it's cool for you to vacillate as a woman between feminine and masculine, but if you plan on developing and maintaining a healthy relationship with a healthy masculine man, you have to get up out of all of that all, all that 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 bro energy. You have you have you have to get out of that. You have to learn how to leave all of that boss stuff at your job or wherever it is. And when you step into your house, you need you need to you know you got to change your tone. You can't you can't walk up in no masculine man's house. You know you know looking and having all of this you know challenging type energy. And no, no man won't live with that. No, no man won't live with that. A man's house is supposed to be okay. Let me leave that alone. Get in trouble. Letter A, masculine men cannot resist feminine women. Now, here's the sad thing. It's becoming harder and harder to find a woman that actually intentionally falls into her feminine. And that's for a lot of reasons, because a woman cannot Relax. See, femininity is relaxed. Feminine energy is relaxed. But a woman cannot relax into her feminine energy where she feels threatened or unsafe, unprotected, unappreciated, or uncovered. So there are a lot of women who are broken and lack the capacity to actually produce their femininity because they yet need to heal. You're not ready for a relationship. Because a masculine man will not be able to resist a feminine woman. A woman that knows how to talk to a man. A woman that knows how to take a man's home environment and make it a place he doesn't want to leave. See, if your man rushing out the house and coming back late, it ain't necessarily that he's cheating. Sometimes he's just trying to stay away from that energy you carry. You sitting around the house mad, don't nobody know what you're mad about and all this kind of stuff. Everything got to be an argument, you know. You got to challenge the man on everything like he out hanging with the bros. If you look in Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Now, when the Bible gives the woman this bit of wisdom, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. The admonishment for a woman to be submissive to her husband is probably the greatest advice the Bible could ever give a woman relative to making a man happy. Submission is not becoming subservient. Submission is not taking a secondary role. Submission is not making the man your boss. Submission is not uh, diminishing yourself. Submission is learning to relax in your feminine and saying to the man, you the man, I trust you to do what you do. If you need some help, you know I got you. You see, submission is when there's a bump in the night, you let bruh go and check that bump out, and you say, you know, I got you. I got nine one doubt already. Holler if you need me to hit the last one, but you're going to let him play his role, right? Well, that 
wisdom has to play out through the whole of the relationship. You got to learn how to just get out the way and let a man do what a man is supposed to do. If a man needs your help, he'll he's man enough. If he's grown, he's man enough to say, babe, I need your help. But you don't need to be interfering with all of this masculine energy like you're going to take over the situation. Masculine men cannot resist feminine women. This is this is one of the ways that the, the, the cleanup woman, I think it was better right uh, sung about the cleanup woman. This is one of the ways the cleanup woman gets in your house. With all them demons she got in her and all of that mis mischievousness she has rolling through her mind, she slips up on your man with a whole lot of feminine energy smiling and talking nice and sweet and all this kind of thing. And before you know it, let her be. Women can't resist masculine men. A masculine man is irresistible to a feminine woman. Because a masculine man prioritizes and prefers women above himself. Woman can't resist a masculine man. He's gentle. He's polite. He's a man that you feel safe with emotionally, physically, but he prefers you and he prioritizes you. That's what a masculine man does. When you find a man that's just out here arguing and bickering and trying to tear a woman down, that's a whole lot of feminine energy. That's that's cat, that's cat fighting there. That's 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 woman on woman right there. When you run upon a masculine man, he's irresistible because he's going he's going to prioritize the woman. He's going to prefer the woman. You know, he makes no <laughs> he makes no qualms about it. If it's between the woman and the man, dude, you out. I'm on the woman's side. That's a masculine man. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27 says, husbands go all out. And this is the message version. It says, husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. So uh, a high value couple, they lean towards their dominant roles. So a woman learns to intentionally lean into her feminine and a man intentionally leans into his masculine. And when this happens, you have to understand this. When you think about, see, like I'm, you know, I'm going to probably do a podcast on the cold with, with the brothers uh, relative to some of the mistakes good men make. So you can be a good guy, but it doesn't necessarily make you an attractive guy. And the thing that makes a man attractive to a woman is when she can sense that masculine energy, when she can smell that testosterone. You know, you just, you know, you just run it being polite, nice, and but you ain't got, you don't have no, you ain't, you ain't got no, no, you know what I'm saying? You, you sexual attraction boils down to energy. A woman is attracted to a man that has masculine energy. He may not be the best looking man, but he got that, he got that, he got that masculine energy thing going. You know what I mean? And he ain't got to be disrespectful, but you know, you, you know, he's a man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no questions about it. You you know he's a man and she, she's attracted to the energy. Sometimes women don't know what they're attracted to. It's the masculine energy. And when a woman hasn't been taught, a lot of times she reads to toxic masculine energy as attractive. She's she's feeling that, you know, that that take over, take lead kind of thing that goes on in a in a toxic man, but she's looking beyond all of the other stuff that comes along with it. Well, a good man that has good intentions and the right heart should be intentional about being masculine, taking charge, leading, you know. You know, you, you, okay. Another thing that comes of this, this energy thing 
not only is sexual attraction, not only does sexual attraction boil down to energy, a man is always sexually attracted to a woman that's uh, very feminine. She ain't got to be the most beautiful girl, but if she's feminine, oh my goodness. It's energy. We don't see, nobody's taught us this, that we're sexually attracted to energy. That's why you can look at a person that is beautiful and say, I don't feel nothing for them sexually. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, mm -mm. And then you can run up on somebody that may not have half their looks, but they got that swag. They got that energy. You know what I'm saying? And you feeling it. You can hear it. You can sense it. It's palpable. Another thing about energy is that long-term fulfillment is in energy. See, while you think 666 is what you want right now, well, you know, it's six pack gonna turn into a two liter. And as as a brother get older, it, it, you know that six feet gonna turn into the five ten. He shrinks. You don't know what's gonna happen with the six figures. You know, homegirl got that little Coke bottle now, but you know what I'm saying? But the thing that's going to be consistent and produce long-term fulfillment is when your man has that masculine energy, when your woman has that feminine energy. So high-value couples play to their dominant energy. A man is going to be a man, and a woman is going to be a woman. She's not going to be sizing up, and dude ain't going to be laying back, you know, like it's just girl talk. No, no, he's going to be the man. And she's going to be the woman. Now, let me give you number three. Both share the privilege of vision. I heard this discussed recently. Is it, the question was asked, does the man solely have the vision? No, 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 no. Man don't solely have no vision. Contrary to popular religious culture, vision is not exclusively in the man. God, now listen to this very carefully. I want you to hear me now. God will give the man, the husband, the husband, a vision for the family that the woman can buy into and fit into because his vision matches her personal vision. Got it? So when a woman is dating a man, she's asking questions. She's doing like Sheba did Solomon. She's proving him with hard questions because she's trying to see what is his vision? How broad, how deep is his vision? What is his idea about family and marriage? And after she gets the data, then she makes a decision as he pursues her. She makes a decision to choose him or not. If she chooses him because of his energy, because of his vision, she, she, she is intentionally choosing a man who has a vision that is broad enough and deep enough for her to fit into. In other words, she doesn't have to eliminate herself to fit into his vision. But inside of that vision, there are aspects of the vision that God even gives the man that God will give the woman the specifics to. God will give the man a general idea but then when he when he gets the right woman, the woman will come in and say, you know what? I see us doing this here. And, and I see us doing it like this. And you say, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. You know, how do we make it happen? And then that'll be the woman leading out with vision and he'll be in the supportive role. But again, it's not about the individuals. This is about the high value couple. So vision quite often is shared. So a woman has to have vision because she's here on purpose as a as an individual as a single everybody that's born has to have vision because we come into the world to fulfill a purpose even as individuals if only men have vision it means that single women have no purpose this is why the man listen to this carefully this is why the man pursues the woman and the woman chooses the man. The man pursues, the woman chooses. Because the man should pursue, lead with his vision. The woman should analyze that vision and choose based on the broadness and the depth 
of the man's vision and if she can fit into it. She chooses a man whose vision may accommodate her vision and whose vision she can buy into and assist to grow and to become a what? Merger. And when a woman chooses a man like this, you don't have all of these issues with submitting because you, you already know what you're dealing with. The husband being head simply means that things start with him in the order of God. I'm the head of the, I'm the, I'm the head of the wife. I'm the head of the wife. That just simply means that that's God's order. You know, God's going to deal with the man before he deals with the woman. If something go wrong, he's going to check for the man. When things went wrong in, in the garden, God said, hey, Adam, where are you? You know what I'm saying? In, in the order of God, it's kind of like when Jesus was feeding the 5,000, he instructed his disciples, make the men sit down. And the disciples gave to the men, and then the men gave to their wives, and the wives gave to the children. That was the order of God. God has an order for everything. It doesn't mean that he's more important or he's the boss. It just means that this is where he falls in the order of God. Ephesians 5, 22, 23, wives submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church. He's the savior of the body. Um, let me show you something here. Um, in, in 2 Kings chapter 4, I got to hurry up, my time is gone. Verses 8 through 11, it says, And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, where was a what? Great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat bread. And long story short, this woman was married, but the Bible calls her a great woman because both share vision. When you go to Proverbs 31, you look at the Proverbs 31 woman. She had a, she had a great man for a husband. But listen to how it reads, Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman for a price is far above rubies. The heart of a husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. This has to be a woman with vision. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from, from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands. She planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needed. This woman got, she got, she's multifaceted because she's a visionary woman. Vision is shared. There is a, both share the privilege of vision in a high value marriage. Now, number four, and finally, and I got to go, they share a unified economy. You know, ev you know, average couples are stumbling over the idea of 50-50. Everybody wants to talk about 50-50. Bro sitting at the table talking about, you know, your, your part of the bill is 24-59. And then, you know, okay. In high value couples, it's 100 100. There's no 50 50 in our house. When I was making less and Lisa was making more, there was no 50 50. There was 100 100. When I started making more, there's no 50 50, 100 100. What do I mean by that? The money that comes into our house, into our family, into our marriage is 100% hers and 100% mine. We're not sitting around here trying to figure out who's going to pay the, the phone bill. Who gonna pay. We're going to pay the phone bill. We're going to pay the light bill. So it means that I don't have to trip if my woman is making more money than me because the house, the marriage, these are our monies. And if you should marry somebody. Now, I'm not saying that I'm speaking against um, prenups and all of that. Sometimes that stuff is, is necessary, especially if you got children to protect. But I'm saying in general, we ain't got no business tripping over no 50-50 because if you marrying the right person, it's, it's not about me, it's not about he or she, it's about we. 
And the Bible says in Genesis 2, 24, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. It does not matter who brings what to the table or the marriage. It's all ours. It's all ours. So we don't have to have this argument. High value uh, couples don't have this argument about, you know, 50-50. How much you bringing? 60-40, 70-30. No, no, it's 100-100. I wouldn't marry somebody I could not pool my resources with. And I mean, you ain't got to agree with me. You don't have to agree with me. I know a lot of folk don't. You don't have to agree with me. I'm just telling you how it's supposed to work. If you look in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10, it says this, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. That's what it's supposed to be about. The two of us are together. We rocking out together. We're one family. We're one unit. Whatever comes in this house, this is our money. You know, that's why it's important for a woman to marry a man that has a work ethic. Because it's not so far out of order for a woman to say, I don't want to work no more. But if you get a little feminine man that, that's, you know, see you making good money, talking about he don't want to work no more, you married bad. You married bad. You know, but back to my point. It's our money. So if 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 you go out there and you 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 got a, you you got a job making a million dollars a year and and, you know, for you to do it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he going to have to hold the kids down or whatever. Hold the kids down. But when you get home, you got to understand you can't come in with that old, old, old boss chick stuff. You got to step back into your feminine. And, bro, you can't be sitting around there getting soft and feminized, taking milk baths. You're going to still have to be the man. You're going to have to be the bro. Because the most important thing in a high value couple's relationship is. Dominant energy, not 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 dominant roles, gender roles, but dominant energy roles. All right, I'm done. I talked enough, too much actually. I, I know I'm gonna get a lot of emails on this one. Listen, Father, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. Let this wisdom plant in them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, listen, I've talked too long. You know what to do. Go to my website, check out all of my online programs, sign up for my mailing list. You know, you, we'll send you the email when I'm coming live or whatever. Um, while you're there, go to my store. Uh, if, you know, if you're watching this in December of 2022, my, my latest book, here it is, Me, My Mind, is coming out. And I got 1,000 that I'm selling from my own personal store, rcblakestore.com. And in January, it's going to be the official launch. But all of the 1,000 that I sell through the store, I'm signing. So if you want to be a part of that, you can go to rcblakestore.com and uh, you can purchase there. And in January, we're going to drop everything. Don't forget to stop by Amazon, pick up any or all of my books there. Thanks to all of you that have sown into our lives. If you need counseling of any kind, if you look in the description, there's a link for better help counseling. If you use it, it'll get you 10% off of the cost of their counseling. And they in turn from my referring you will make a deposit into RSC Blake's ministries. Listen, I love you. Happy holidays to you. Have an amazing, safe holiday season. And until next time, on behalf of Lisa and I, we will see you at the top because you're on top and you're going higher. I know it. God bless you. Love you. We here at RC Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. RC and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of The Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. 
Once again, all of us here at RC Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.